Hello, welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we're going to talk about beam design. To really know, understand how to design a beam, you got to know how beam uh, 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 behave under uh, loading and what makes the beam fail and how can we prevent that. So when we look at the beam under loading, what the, one of the things the beam does is deflect. And so that's one of your criteria you want to design for deflection. But take a look at this. This, this is like a beam. And this will be the uh, neutral axis of the beam. From here, on the top part is compression. The bottom part is intention. And the distance from neutral axis to the top of furthest area we call C. So when we look at the bending stress in this beam, with MC over I, C be the furthest part away. That means if you look at the cross-section stress of this, the stress is highest at the top, and the bottom could be compression and tension. So what we design beam for, if we have a long beam and it's loaded, let's cut that beam and look at the cross-section of it, and we're going to see, like we sh showed on a previous uh, video, we're going to see shear and we're going to see bending moment. So those are two things going to make us uh, uh, concerned about to design, because if the beam fails, it is going to fail through shear, through stress. There are other ways, but for now, we're only going to be concerned about sh uh, the shear and the bending moment. And the bending moment causes bending stress, which is the formula here, and the shear causes st shear stress. So that's we're going to design a beam based on these two behavior. But when you look at beams, um, they are, uh, let me go over this PowerPoint right here. Usually beams are, uh, are uh, uh, there are different type of beam. They're classified by the way they are supported. We have a, a cantilever beam, simply supported, continuous span, fixed ended, overhanging, and also cantilever and simply uh, supported. And uh, there are uh, different type of uh, construction beam. They are uh, made from different material like steel I-beam, and we have uh, like a a concrete beam and we have a timber beam and if you're designing those each one of those basically have their own criteria their own steps but in here we're going to learn just the basic design how we're designing uh, uh, a simple beam one thing you got to look at it when we talked about it when we cut in a beam uh, and we can see the uh, uh, the uh, bending moment and shear and how we do that we usually go ahead and do the shear moment diagram so when we have the shear moment diagram, we can find out at any point of that beam, what is my bending moment, how much it is, and what is my shear. Normally, we look at the maximum shear and maximum moment, and we design uh, against those. Uh, if you uh, take a look at this picture, this is just before I retired when I worked on uh, bridges. Um, you can see when, when they have these uh, girder uh, for bridges, they, uh, the vehicle that they deliver is, it can be only so long. So they come in pieces and they basically get spliced together. And when you splice them, uh, uh, you splice these beam girder together, you assume to become like one. And uh, one of the area we're looking for is where the shear and moment are, are the uh, lowest. And that's the area, it's a good area for splicing, to just bring that up anyway. Um, so let's, what is the step we're going to follow to design a beam for this class is, um, what I have on here is, first step, we're going to draw the shear moment diagram, and then we're going to go ahead, based on a shear moment diagram, we take the, we assuming the beam is long, and if it's long, therefore, we're going to say the bending moment is going to control, so we're going to design for, uh, uh, based on bending stress, and from there, we can calculate the uh, uh, section of the beam. Once we have the section, we know the size of the beam, and then we're going to look at the beam. We're going to go ahead and calculate how much the beam weighs uh, the, uh, based on the material. And we add that additional weight back into the uh, moment and see how much increase the moment. Are we still within a tolerable limit? Is it still less than the allowable stress? So we want our beam, we want, uh, we want our beam, the, the stress in our beam based on the loading should be less than allowable stress and allowable uh, maximum shear. So from there, we're going to go ahead and uh, check for uh, deflection if it's required based on where you are. Uh, we will have, once we get to uh, chapter 16, we talk about deflection, so I'm going to just skip this part. And then we, uh, the double, we check for the shear, depend what it is, and uh, 
we can uh, uh, if the beam is too short we start with the design for shear but if the beam is too long we design it with, for the moment and we check it with shear so what we're going to do here now we're going to go ahead and go over a couple of examples and hopefully kind of clarify this let me erase this so take a look at this problem right here and uh, we have this uh, load on top of this beam and it's 1.2 k per foot and we really want to find out uh, what size of a uh, um, uh, w-shape beam we should use based on this loading so uh, first thing we're going to do we're going to go ahead uh, I went ahead and did this and we're going to draw the free body diagram and when we do a free body diagram this is our we calculate the reaction and we know how we do the reaction. I'm not going to go over it here. We've done it before. We take a moment about point B and we calculate RA and then we do summation FOI to calculate both reactions. Once we have that, we can draw our shear diagram. We know the reaction is 6.6 uh, .6 kips, so we're going to come up here, go up 6.6, .6, and there's nothing happening between here and there, so it's going to go straight across. And once this is a uniform, the distributed uniform load, once we get here, it's going to come down at the end angle uh, uh, at the uh, uh, slope of 1.2 kip per foot. Then until we get to zero. So what this point is, we need to find out where it's here because this is where the maximum uh, moment will happen. So we know this is a four feet right here. And therefore, that's four feet. And that's going to be 6.6. .6. We don't know that distance. We're going to say, okay, 6.6 .6 minus uh, 1.2 times x is equal to 0. And then if you go ahead, 6.6 .6 divided by uh, 1.2, that should come out to uh, 4.5, 5.5. Uh, so x has come out 5.5, and therefore this right point right here become 9.5. And that's where our maximum moment is. So where you have shear equals 0, you have maximum moment. And continue from here going all the way down until we hit uh, right here. Again, again, 1.2 kip per foot. And that will become 5.4. And the reaction is going to bring them back up. We go to the moment diagram. And this is a, a rectangular. So our pitch is going to be going up uh, at the uh, uh, straight uh, slope. Then once we get here, because it's a triangular, and then we're going to go curve parabola. What we're going to do first, you want to draw this, find out the area under this, become 26.4, you make your dot here, and then find out the area under here, add it to this, it become 44.4, so probably you get there. And the area under here, deduct that, bring it back down here, and eventually you come back to zero. So what we're looking for really basically is maximum moment. M max came out to uh, 44.5 kip foot. And share max came out to 6.6 kip. So let's proceed from here. We look at the equation. What we're going to do is um, go ahead and calculate the section for it. Uh, we know stress is equal mc divided by i, or we can also m over s, and we're looking for s, our s is going to come out to um, maximum moment, which we're looking for divided by uh, allowable stress. Allowable stress is was given in a problem, and that was given as 22. I didn't write it down here, so our allowable stress is 22 KSI. And I believe our allowable shear stress was, if I have it, uh, 12 KSI. So now we have our maximum moment came out to 44 point. Now it's 44 point kip foot. Okay, we like to convert this to an inch because down here allowable stress is a PSI, KSI. So that's divided by 22 KSI. Now our, our uh, unit going to work out. And I have 24.3. Uh, inch 
cube. Now, when we go back in the book, most of the steel design book has this, and we can go ahead and select a, a, a select the a, a, a W shape, and there's a number we can select, and you want to go over the 24 to be safe a little bit, so you can, so you can sleep better at night time, and we can select uh, two of them. Uh, how about like W12 uh, by uh, 22, and also you can W14 by, uh, uh, no, W12 by 22, and W14 by 22. And you can even go with select a bunch of other one, but it'll be a little bit more than your uh, section that you figure out. So let's figure out, just say we're gonna go with W12 by 22, and, uh, and if we stay with that, we're gonna have the uh, property section, our section gonna be uh, SX comes out to 25.4, and what we're looking for is the D, which comes out to uh, 12.31, and uh, the thickness of the web is uh, 0.26 inch. Because we need those. Now we have that. We're going to go ahead, check against the shear. And our shear max was uh, shear max is equal to uh, V max divided by uh, TWD. And that comes out to. Uh, Six point six divided by uh, 0 0.266 times um, twelve thirty one. Yeah. So that comes out to uh, two point oh six, which is way less than uh, twelve ksi. Now, uh, so that checks out, and that's it. Let's go to the second problem. Give me time to erase this board. The problem is basically a wooden uh, beam, and we like to find out the dimension of this uh, uh, beam, design this. And what we like to see, we want to have the rectangular dimension to a point that the, way, the height is twice as if the width like is shown here. So here's the beam right here, and we just simply support it. We're gonna do a quick shear moment diagram. Reaction become 800 pound each, and we do a shear diagram. We've done this many times, and moment diagram, and therefore my shear max come out at 800 pound, and my maximum bending moment comes out 2,400 pound. Again, when we cut a beam, the one, two things we worry about is the shear and uh, bending stress. So now in here, the bending stress, uh, I mean shear and the bending moment, which the bending uh, stress is, uh, it's, uh, let me write this down here. And that is equal MC over I. Those are the things we worry about. So one of the things we have to find out, let's calculate I first. We already know M and C is gonna be, uh, if this is a neutral axis right here, your C is a distance from neutral axis to the outermost outer layer, that means it's gonna be from here to there, which is A. Uh, let's do the A for I first. I is equal 112, and that beam is uh, A, and the height is 2A cube, and that comes out to A by power four, so now we have I. The next thing we wanna calculate is the stress uh, max is equal M, M is 2,400 pound per foot, pound foot, and then 2,400 C is A, and I is uh, two-third of A4, and that's equal, stress max, stress max is 1,500 pound, so from here we can say A is equal uh, <coughs> 3.06. <clears throat> However, what we like to see is uh, uh, go to the nearest uh, uh, practical uh, dimension. So A is equal 3.318 of inch or 31.25. And if we plug this A back in here, our I should come out to um, 63.57 inch by power 4. 
Okay, now we have everything. This is designed based on, a <coughs> excuse me, designed based on a, a bending stress. And now we want to check it with the shear. The shear formula maximum is VQIT. Let's, we got to figure out Q first. So Q max, we talked about in that other uh, video, is exist at here for shear at the, uh, at the uh, um, neutral axis. And that's going to be uh, y prime. Let's write the formula than y prime time a prime. So uh, a prime is the, okay. You're looking for q at this point. Therefore, you're looking for the area above here up. And we know q uh, shear is zero up here. So from here to here, what is the area? It's a time a. But what is the y prime? Is it from center of this shape to here, which is a divided by 2, which is 3.125 divided by 2. That's your y prime. And your a is 3.125 times 3.125. <clears throat> and that comes out to um, 1526. And I think that's inch by power 3. Now we can find shear max. So shear max. <clears throat> it's VQ and V is uh, 800 time, um, where do you go, Q, 1526 divided by um, IT, 63.57. Beam we came out to 3.125 and that comes out to uh, 6144 which is less than uh, share max is 1500 150 psi and that checks out remember this equation right here we talked about we said if the shape is uh, rectangular we can always say T max can be 1.5 uh, V divided by A. Let's plug that, see if you're going to get the same number. That's on you. <clears throat> okay, so this is how we do it. And until next lecture, be safe and take care of yourself.